face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better, where on this week we're gonna tackle Mega Pidgeot versus Tornadius Virion. While I will mention that Incarnate is a very, very good form of Tornadus, the Virion form is the vastly superior one towards this matchup, and Mega Pidgeot and Tornadus Virion are on so many ways and aspects very, very much alike. So much so that it's so even Shea actually does the same speed here of 121. And for the reason of being, these Pokemon are very, very similar. The function of a team of, with them in mind are very, very similar in structure. And it's because they're really good, hard hitting, private based special attackers. So yeah, it's up to me to, of course, go over their stats, ability, and move pool, and overarching theme, really, to see which one of these two really are. Better. And we're gonna start off with the first Pokemon, which of course being introduced, and that is going to be Pidgeot. Now, Mega Pidgeot on its own really sport a very, very interesting aspect. Normal flying typing combination, which it's both one of the worst and one of the best in the game, depending on what matchup you're dealing with. You pack two immunities in Ghost and Ground, Wall Resist, Bug and Grass. So you miss out on one key resistance here, which is of course finding. We also get an immunity in Ghost. But you get the exact same weaknesses as a regular flying type will have, which is electric, ice, and rocks. Normal doesn't necessarily cover anything of flying is necessarily already dealing with, but at the same time, you'll lose your resistance to finding that stab, which is always going to be a thing that will be annoying when hit with neutral damage towards that. But at the same time, I stated immunity to ghosts, which is always really, really, really nice. When it comes to stat distribution on Mega Pidgeot, it would be summed up basically in very balanced with two parts really peaking. Uh, we have 83 in his HP, 80 in attack, defense, and special defense, making it not the bulkiest thing around, but at the same time, it's definitely not fragile. But the special attack 135, yeah, that's really high. One of the highest in the game for the type combination alone. If anything, soul type combination normal. Is very high and flying, it's really high. Uh, so it's definitely up there. And of course, the speed of 121. Make sure to outspeed 120 miles clearly. It also makes sure that you outspeed 80 base Scarfers, which makes Mega Pidgeot a very, very tremendous threat to be forced to be dealing with because the speed here really doesn't allow for any type of switch up situations at all. You can't necessarily wall this situation due to the high special attack alone. And Mega Pidgeot on its own, due to its dual step will hit any Pokemon on a switching fairly high, making it very, very hard to tackle it head on, actually. And when it comes to its ability, it only packs one, and the one here is really relevant. While it is a very, very controversial ability due to its weaknesses, no guard, make sure that you hit everything with 100% accurate, which will mean that hurricanes that usually only are 70% accurate will now be 100%. Now, the critical part here is that yes, that also means that Stone Edge are now 100% accurate towards you, but at your speed here, I don't believe that's something you need to worry about. If you don't kill with Hurricane in your first place, you have no reason standing to go for it. But Nogar really just helped Pidgeot quite a lot, primarily because Hurricane is just such a hard hitting move, 120 base, and with 135 attack, that only enforces the damage output naturally making Pidgeot one of the strongest flying types around. So ability there, one of the best part about Mega Pidgeot. But that's not all, we also have move pools of course cover. And Mega Pidgeot's move pool, while not the broadest in the game, it does stay fairly relevant. First and foremost, we have Quick Attack, always good priority, and of course with Stab in mind, it only enforces that part. Mirror Mood, to be able to capitalize on a super effective hit towards you. Air Slash, don't use that. Hurricane is stated, probably your bread and butter for the matchup. Uh, Feather Dance, always going to be relevant. Agility, if you need to outspeed something. Roost, yes, this Pokemon gets Roost, which is something it has as a perk over Tornadus, making it able to actually wall out Pokemon that could do super effective hits, such of course the ones that will hit you with Electric Ice or Rock, being able to hit neutrally towards you, and that's always going to be helpful. Hyper Beam, really needs no introduction here. With the special attack that this Pokemon is packing, you really want the highest damage output possible. Hyper Beam could provide just that. And, you know, while Hurricane is going to be your primary move, Hyper Beam does push it a bit over the edge, clearly. Work up, in case you want to be, of course, on both sides and actually hit the boards, both sides of the aspect. Steel Wing, 
I guess to some extent relevant. U-turn pivoting always nice with flying types in mind to be able to hit something and get out. Pursuit, be able to lock Pokemon in. Yeah, there's no further introduction there, does it? Steel Wing again, huh? Bravered. Yeah, if you want to go physical, you are allowed to do so, but Hurricane will always be, in my honest opinion, the vastly superior one here. Defog. Yeah, being able to stand and get hazards out of the way. Also really relevant in many aspects. Heatwave just covered the best part about being able to actually hit steel types that could be walling you, meaning primarily that only rock types is the one that are possibly able to wall to make a pigeon form of anything. Double edge in case you want to go physical at the same time here, and of course reflects from generation one, being able to of course be defensive if you really need to. So with that said, the Mega Pidgeot's move pool really does allow it to spam Hurricane and have niche moves to make it able to hit uh, key parts about a team. But primarily here, usually only you're gonna go with Hurricane, Heat Wave, Hidden Power Grass usually, and U-Turn or Roost. And it does this job fairly alright, and making it one of the best flying types in the whole game due to this very aspect. So it's whether or not it can keep up or even be better than of course Tornadoes introduced to the generation before it. Now, Tornadoes is a very interesting Pokemon. First and foremost, of course, it's typing Soul Flying, making it actually the only Soul Flying Pokemon in the whole game as of right now. That means immunity in ground, resistance in bug, fighting grass, and of course, weakness to electric ice and rock. So, primarily to towards Pidgeot, it's very much alike. You miss one immunity in Ghost, but you also gain a resistance in fighting. So, it's not all bad. It's Pretty much the same if you ask me. When it comes to stat distribution, I would say that we have more peaking, but at the same time we have a balanced bulk like Pidgeot. We have 79 HP, 100 in attack, 80 in defense, 110 in special attack, 90 in the special offense, and as Pidgeot of course, 121 in its speed tier. So while Tornadoes do pack less HP than Mega Pidgeot, it does have a higher special defense, making it by default actually more bulkier than Pidgeot, even though they are on par with one another. And then it comes to attack that yes, 20 base attack stronger than Mega Pidgeot, while lacking 25 special attack towards Pidgeot. Yeah, those are tough aspects, but it definitely should be stated here that 110 special attack is definitely not bad. And being able to actually go physical with one base attack, yeah. Tornadoes has the option and the luxury of being a mixed wall breaker if it's forced to do so. Though with the speed here, it could also rely heavily on being a possible late game sweeper. But what really makes Tornadoes so good is Regenerator, its ability being able to recover 33% of your HP on a switch out. What this basically means is that you are weak to rocks, but you're not killed by rocks. Stealth Rocks are always going to be one of those really tough aspects about a Wi-Fi battle and being forced to not take residual damage towards it or not be nerfed by it makes Tornadoes fairly good to use. It also makes it able to have a passive recovery in Assault Vest and whatnot, making Tornadoes very, very good. Because Tornadoes, of course, has the luxury of carrying an item over Mega Pidgeot and that's always going to be a relevant aspect towards it and regenerate to just enforces that bulkier part about it. And as stated before, Mixed Attacker makes the Pokemon a bit more versatile in my opinion, but it only is as versatile as its move pool makes it out to be, so does it have the move pool to pull something like that off to be a mixed wall breaker, that is? And I would definitely say so. Tornadoes has a very broad array of moves. We have Hammer On, for example, which is a good fighting move, but you do lose speed by using it. Hurricane, Clearly, it's going to be your bread and butter like Mega Pidgeot, but not without accuracy. While it could capitalize on Fly MC to be able to at least ensure one hit, it really should be said here that Tornadoes will heavily rely on a 70% base stab, and that's not always a good thing. And in a very tight spot, that could really make or break a game. Dark Pulse, which of course is always good, really good filler together with the likes of Extra Sensory. We have Agility, we have Ear Slash if you really need to capitalize on something else and actually knock off a Hurricane. We also have Crunch, Bulk Up. Bulk Up is definitely one of those things that are helpful since Bulk Up will allow you to actually fanning yourself up. If, of course, if you don't want to switch out with re Regenerate Your Mind and of course capitalize on the likes of Acrobatics. We also have Tailwind, we have Smackdown and as stated, Acrobatics. Sludge Wave and Sludge Bomb, Focus Blast, 
grass knot which really ensures that no rock type wall is Pokemon at all since the grass knot is always going to be one of those aspects that just just kill them U-turn which is a very good move towards tornadoes primarily because you can like, activate your rege regenerator while switching out foul play in case you want to go defensive you're allowed to do so a heat wave for the same reason as uh, Mega Pidgeot being able to hit steel types yeah that's helpful icy wind yeah look upon which a flying type that goes, gets an icy move. Icy wind is very good to get. Iron sail for those pesky fairy types and possible rock types actually. Knockoff, always a good utility move. Superpower, in case you don't want to go for hammer arm, superpower is not only stronger, but also, of course, will ensure that you don't lose any speed. And this could always be great towards the likes of Shansi, for example, who could wall the special attacking set. And starting generation 7, Ultra Sun and Moon. This Pokemon will also carry Defog. So we have now a Defogger with Regenerator, which which I will definitely believe is superior to Mega Pidgeot's possible Regenerator as a whole. But as it stands now for of course Tornadoes, it has a broader move pool, it hit more things super effectively, but it doesn't hit them as hard. So that's always going to be an aspect. So it comes down to whether or not the, the Regenerator aspect about Tornadoes is enough to deal with no guard aspect of actually hurricane spamming from Mega Pidgeot. And here is actually where I am a bit split. I really, really gonna push Tornadoes aspect here to the, really the breaking point. But it comes down to the broader move pool does allow it to be more functional, but as a sole flying type and just flying stab in general. Tornadoes is not on par with Mega Pidgeot. The Hurricane spam is definitely something else, and Mega Pidgeot has the aspect to roost, making it able to actually wall out certain Pokemon fairly alright, and I'll even go so far and say way better than Tornadoes in so many aspects. Uh, Mega Pidgeot on its own really, really just pushed the point of what a flying type really can be, and the Hurricane aspect just kind of enforces that really, really well. So what I'm really trying to say here is that I have reasons to say Mega Pidgeot is better than Tornadoes, but I also have obligations to really look upon how these two Pokémon are used, and utilities alone makes Tornadoes vastly superior to Mega Pidgeot. Mega Pidgeot is really one-dimensional, and one, while that's not necessarily a bad thing, the thing it does, it does probably one of the best in the game. Hurricane spamming is something it does exclusively, if you ask me, but Tornadoes has more to offer. Now with Defog, it only enforces that, but quite frankly, being able to set up bulk up, being able to capitalize on being both physical and special, and of course with a broader move pool, making it able to be a vastly superior C user, and of course Regenerator, this Pokemon has an aspect to it that really, really does make it stronger and more usable than Mega Pidgeot. Mega Pidgeot, by all means, is one of the best Pokemon in the game, but Tornadoes is also that Pokemon. The aspect towards Tornadoes really does push the boundaries of what a flying type really can be, and while Pidgeot is a great revision of that aspect, Tornadoes really stands tall to be the absolute best soul flying typing in the whole game, and even if normal Flying type is a good aspect to have a dual stab. It is not on par of the utility light that Tornadoes really represents, making Tornadoes, at least in my honest opinion, the better between these two. But this was a very cool matchup. I really wanted to talk about both of these Pokemon for quite some time because they are so much alike. Sharing the same speed here will make it very hard to really distinguish, distinguish the one that really are better. Both spam Hurricane, but both can go for Brave Bird. It, it's very clear that had it only been about the flying type in itself, Pidgeot would have been deemed better. It is the utilities and things that wall out Mega Pidgeot that are not walled out by Tornadoes. The Focus Blast, uh, we have Grass Knot, all those aspects really does make Tornadoes vastly superior to Pidgeot because while Pidgeot hurts, the thing that doesn't wall it, it does hurt it really, really a lot harder than Tornadoes. But Tornadoes doesn't have the aspect to be in force sound and that's always going to be relevant and going into a league concept that only enforces that opinion from me that if you have the option to do be more, you're going to do more. And that is something just me a page is lacking. 
So, as always, guys, thank you for course, watching. What are you honest opinion about these two Pokemon? I really believe these two are really cool to talk about because, like I said, they share a joint vision of what a flying type really can be and represent the best one just because of that. And uh, yeah, make sure to, of course, comment that down below. And yeah, with that said, guys, next week we're gonna do uh, who was really better a uh, few days earlier. We're gonna actually go on Friday when Sun and Moon is coming out, mainly because I'm gonna be playing that Ultra Sun and Moon a lot. So I really just a little bit of a warning, and we are going to look upon a Pokemon that really got a big boost in this generation versus a Pokemon that are really, really as good as really is today. And this has been a highly requested matchup, and I really couldn't do it justice till Ultra Sun and Moon came out. So thank you for watching, guys, and join us next week for this matchup.